finishing up section 5.3. Um, yesterday we did that double angle formula, so today we're doing the half. Um, we have those on our reference sheet that we have. It's kind of, what is it, the one, two, three, the fourth one down, right? So got the double angle, so the, now we're on the half angles. Um, so success criteria is kind of the same as what it's been. Um, we need to be able to find that X, that Y, and that R value. We need to look at the quadrants that we're in to see if they should be positive or negative. Um, we need to be able to substitute those values in for that sine, cosine, or tangent, whichever one is the proper one, and then be able to pick the correct formula off of our formula sheet in order to uh, um, get everything plugged in. Once we plug it in, then we can chug through the math, right? So I just took a little quick screenshot of those half angles um, that we're going to be talking about. Uh, when you take the square root, and you take the square root of any number, we remember that you get that positive or that negative value, and then that's when looking at those quadrants is going to come in handy to where um, if we're in quadrant 1, 2, 3, or 4, that's going to tell us if the sine, the cosine, or the tangent's got to be positive or negative. And that's how we fit pick if it's going to be the positive or the negative one. And then again, um, just like when it came to that double angle formula, there was three different like cosine formulas you could use depending on what information they give you. And when it comes to half angles, it kind of does that with the tangent. Granted, you don't have to use all three of those. You just get to pick which one you want to use, which one is going to fit, fit whatever it is that uh, uh, the information they give you or the information you want to find, whichever one you want to use. Sound like a plan? Yep. So when we're looking for these, um, remember when it comes to finding these exact values, we know that we got a circle going around, all right, and then you got like some angle that's going like through that circle, and we're finding those exact values, so we're finding that point that's on the circle, and so that's what all of these little formulas help us do is to find those exact values that are on that circle. So you want to just jump on in and try one? It's crazy now because of how I have to share my see my page with you guys. I don't see your guys' faces, so you'll have to yell at me, right? All right. So uh, let's find those exact values. So, and we also know when we're looking for those exact values, usually we're going to get some fractions, and we're going to leave them as fractions, because nine times out of ten, if we divide out that fraction, it's going to give us a decimal, a non-repeating decimal, which is an estimation and not an exact, right? So, let's say they gave us um, sine alpha, and they told us that that was 7 over 25, and they also told us that alpha lies in quadrant 1. And let's say they want us to find um, what is, whoops, yeah. Uh, what do we want to find? We will don't start with sine. So let's say they want us to find that half angle, right? Alpha divided by 2 is the same thing as 1 half of alpha. So they want us to find that half value of that alpha. Um, so if we go back and we look at our little formula sheet, If they want us to find sine of alpha divided by 2 and we look at our formula, what do we need to know? Yeah, exactly. We need to know cosine, right? And right now we don't know cosine of alpha, but I think we know how to find cosine of alpha, correct? How are we going to find cosine of alpha? Here, we'll even write, you know, let me write that formula out for you guys. What was it? Positive or negative? The square root of 1 minus cosine of alpha all divided by 2, right? So we need to find cosine of alpha. You guys know how to find it? 
Yeah, you guys know how to find it. We're going to use that equation of the circle, correct? So off of our sign, uh-oh, I think I'm lagging again. I think I caught up, right? So if I look at my sine of alpha value, that 7 over 25, my 7 is my what value? What guys? I can hear you guys. Come on. I said why. Yep. <laughs> and 25 is our? R. R. There you go. I thought you guys were still there, right? So we need to find what value? X. And how are we going to find x? Equation of a sir. Equation of a circle. So x squared plus 7 squared equals 25 squared. x squared plus 49 equals 625. Picking up on what I'm laying down. Everybody with us? Yeah. All right. So x squared is going to equal? Five seventy-six. I heard it. Yep. Then we're going to take the square root of that, and we're going to get the positive or negative twenty-four. And which one do we want? Do we want the positive twenty-four or the negative twenty-four? Right, we want the positive. And why do we want the positive? Quadrant one. Good job, good job. So our cosine is going to be 24 over the radius, 25. All right? You guys good so far? All right. So in our formula, we needed to find cosine of alpha, and we got cosine of alpha. So we just have to make that substitution, make that little substitution, plug it in, and then just kind of like chug through the problem, right? All right. So we can actually decide right now if we want the positive value or the negative value. Which one do you think we want for the sine in quadrant one? We want the positive good job good job right all right so we're gonna leave it positive and then we're just gonna do some plugging and chugging right so 1 minus 24 over 25 all divided by 2 and then if I wanted to save some ink because I know I have this fraction up in my numerator and to subtract fractions we got to have a common denominator so I'm going to take that 1 away, and I'm going to replace it with, what do you think? Oh, yeah, I should know, right? 25 over 25, right? I'm going to clean this up a second. This little square root guy, I didn't quite make him long enough. That whole entire thing woo, is under that radical, right? So that 2 is also under there. So now we can kind of keep simplifying. We still got our radical, our square root. What do we get in our numerator? 1 over 25. And that's all divided by 2. And if it makes you feel warm and fuzzy, so that way you just have a fraction divided by a fraction, you can make that guy a fraction too. Right? Am I losing you? Are you still with me? So to simplify that, fraction divided by a fraction, I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal. What's the reciprocal of 2 over 1? I think we're back. All right. So I know you guys kept going, so what did we get? We got the square root of 1 over 50, right? And at this point, a lot of times... Um, I'll split this into two radicals, and I'll do this as the square root of 1 divided by the square root of 50, and then simplify numerator and denominator kind of independently. What's the square root of 1? 1, right? And then that square root of 50, we're going to break that into what? The square root of 25 times the square root of 2? 
So 1 over square root of 25 is 5 square root of 2. Okay. Still can't leave that square root of 2, that radical in the denominator. So what are we going to do? Multiply top and bottom by square root of 2. So in my numerator, I got square root of 2. What do I have in my denominator? The square root of 2 has square root of 2. The square root of 2 has 2. You said 10? Awesome. There you go. Good job, guys. All right? So on these problems, they'll want you guys to do the half angles for sine, cosine, and tangent. Right? Um, if you look at the cosine formula, you have a plus. Right? Where on the sine, you have the negative. So... You already found out what the cosine was. So really you're just kind of like redoing that problem, except you're just going to have a plus in there instead of the minus. So I think you guys will be good on cosine. And then how about we do tangent together as a class? You guys up for that? Too bad, too sad. I'm doing it anyways. Right? <laughs> All right. And then this is where... If I go back, um, like you can remember how I said you can kind of pick or choose which tangent formula you wanted to use. So, like we found cosine, so we oops, so we can plug those in for those values, right? Granted, on this problem because they gave us what the sine was, you could use either one of these formulas because they got that sine and the cosine. But if they only gave you like a cosine value, like I want to go ahead and find the sine value in order to use that formula. I would just stick with the one, right? So it's kind of like a personal preference which one you want to pick. But I know with you guys, I think um, fractions, I kind of keep hammering you guys on with fractions. But I know like the radicals is kind of a, not that it's new by any means to you guys, but it's kind of something that we haven't really messed around too much with this semester. So... I'm just going to stick with doing the square root one just to give us a little square root practice. Sound like a plan? All right. So let's say they wanted us to find um, the tangent of alpha over 2. Right? So I'm going to use that formula plus or minus the square root of 1 minus cosine alpha over 1 plus cosine of alpha. All right? And we already know what cosine of alpha is, so we're just going to start plugging and chugging it into our formula. All right? So we got to decide if we want the positive or the negative, and we want the positive. Good job. Yep, because we're in quadrant one, right? Tangent in quadrant one is positive. So we want the positive value. Um, 1 minus cosine of alpha, and we found out that cosine of alpha was 24 over 25. So 1 minus 24 over 25, all divided by 1 plus 24 over 25. All right? Then either you guys can uh, rewrite it. Or you can save a little bit of ink. And what are you going to do with your 1? We're going to make both of those 25 over 25. Man, I'm running out of some real estate on this one. <laughs> All right. What are we going to get in our numerator? Uh-oh. I'm making all kinds of havoc. <laughs> uh, whoop. 1 over 25? All divided by... What are we going to get in the denominator? 49 over 25? Right? 
We got a fraction divided by a fraction. So that means we are going to multiply by the reciprocal. What happens there? Yeah, we can cross cancel those guys out, right? And then now we're down to the square root of 1 over 49. So either write that as um, 2 or the square root of 1 divided by the square root of 49 or what do you think it's going to equal? 1 over 7? And there's your exact answer.